Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode we're gonna be installing this rock and roll bed. So it's a full width rock and roll bed. It's a M1 test, it has three seat belts and I'll be showing you how to fit it into your van. So stay tuned. Now uh, this bed, it's a bed from uh, Captain Seats LTD in the UK cost me about uh, 1500 sterlings I picked it up with a 20% discount on a Black Friday deal and uh, it's in a covered with a Napa leather so it's uh, very handy if you have kids you just wipe it and uh, it's a little bit easier to keep it clean okay so a few things I do like about this bed and a few things I don't like about this bed so uh, what I like about it, it's a very comfortable bed, it's uh, very comfortable to sleep on, okay, it's a gas strut assistant bed, I'll show you in a minute how to um, unfold it and fold it back, so it has three seat belts, it's a M1 tested, so, um, and uh, it's obviously covered in leather as well it's uh, very easy to keep clean and the few things i don't like about it what i don't like it's just this uh, seat base itself it's a little bit narrow in my opinion so this seat bed it's it's quite narrow okay so it's not very comfortable to sit on but i mean mainly kids sit on this bed so it's all right it's okay -ish, okay and the uh, one more thing which i don't like about it it's very very heavy it's about 146 kilograms so it's add a lot a lot of weight at the back of your van so just imagine if three people will sit in here so your van will look like that like you know it, it just well i suppose you have to do some sacrifices for the safety so and uh, yeah so stay tuned okay so it's very easy to unfold it to make a bed out of it so i'll show you how to do it so all you have to do is just pull this lever to your left okay and then pull the bed itself like that and this is your bed it's about uh, 140 centimeters in width and 180 centimeters in uh, length so i am about 185 so i fit perfectly in here like that okay so it's a plenty of room and then to fold it back all you have to do you just pull this thing here and it just folds back as i said it's a gas strut assisted bed and that's it this is your seat okay now one more thing i forgot to mention what i don't like about it it has this support legs okay so way not ideal you can get a bed without these legs but this particular bed has them uh, support legs okay so we're not really scratching your floor but if you can get a bed without them maybe i don't know like look <sighs> you see my kids like to jump on a bed so maybe it's a good idea to have them okay so it's two of them so this is how it looks from behind okay so it has a little bit of kind of a, a storage in here so you can close the door and put a kids buggy for example in there so it fits very nicely or just put your duvet or pillow or whatever and then it has a bit of storage underneath as well okay so all this can be used as storage and then one more thing i want you to tell you it's a uh, bed itself held in place by eight bolts like that one two three four five and three in here six seven eight but well, i'll be covering this later in the video so stay tuned okay thanks 
a very first thing you need to do in order to fit your bed you need to get your bed inside of your van to do it on your own it's uh, impossible unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody like that but it's time to get your at least two other friends because as I said before bed is very very heavy it's about 146 kilograms the easiest way to get it in it's unfolded so make a bed out of it and then tilt it to one side and just um, put it inside of your van so one person goes inside of your van and uh, two other people are holding a bed outside unfortunately I couldn't film it because I had my bed in storage and uh, it was just a little bit awkward in there and um, I just wanted to get it in and done and dusted kind of and uh, once your bed inside just uh, roughly position it where you want it I wanted my bed at the very very back and uh, make sure your back doors will close you want to position your bed as square as possible and uh, just uh, simply start uh, measuring from uh, each side so all the measurements supposed to be the same from right and left just uh, here good close up it's about uh, 12 centimeters from one side and um, in around the same from the other side too and then I measured um, from the top of a headrest it was about uh, 20 centimeters from one side and uh, 20 from the other side so I'll just go around take as many measurements as possible and they all supposed to be the same And uh, here I'm just measuring from a wheel arch to a frame and it was about eight and a half centimeters so it's a 85 mil and then I've measured from the other side too and um, it was about um, about nine so we're talking about five mil difference so to put it perfectly square I would have had to move a bit two and a half mil but realistically you will never gonna feel it so it's all right don't be too harsh on, on yourself so uh, here again we have about uh, 12 and a half centimeters from one side and then moving on to the other side we have about um, 13 centimeters so again we're talking about five mil difference so i would have had to move a bed for two and a half mil but come on guys i think to be fair it's all right you know i can live with two and a half mil and then i just took my pencil and uh, went around the frame in case um, bed's gonna move i know where to put it back like where to put where exactly to put it back and uh, now I just wanted to unfold it and uh, make a bed out of it and uh, take more measurements just make sure bed is square and uh, I was happy with the position of a bed at this stage Thank you. 
and uh, at this stage you might want to go and close your bark doors and uh, make sure we can close okay and uh, now I'm, I'm making a seat out of it because bed is very heavy it did move okay but because we have this uh, pencil marks around the fr frame we can verify what bed didn't move so I was happy with that And uh, once you're happy with a position, I took this permanent marker and uh, went around all the pre-drilled holes in the bed. So uh, guys from Captain Seeds done a lot of uh, tanking for you, so we pre-drilled all the holes. All you have to do is just uh, mark where the holes will be and just uh, drill through using a 12mm drill bit. And the next step would be uh, removing our spare wheel. It takes a 19 mm socket and this special socket which I uh, thought I didn't have. So I was like looking for it and I couldn't find it and at a later stage I found it in a glove box. Okay, so um, I'll give you a little tip how to go around this uh, special socket if you don't have the right attachment. I took a very same 19 mil socket and then just uh, gave it a little tap of hammer. And uh, it was pretty tight fit so I've used my ratchet to unscrew this bolt. And uh, just at the very end it started to spin so I've used my uh, plumber's adjustable vice grip to unscrew it completely. And then you can um, take your spare wheel out and it's a good time to inspect it as well because my spare wheel was a little bit in a sorry shape. And the next step would be just removing this uh, plastic under tray. It's uh, held in place by a few 8mm bolts. I had to remove this uh, round metal clips as well. Um, they were a little bit corroded and they uh, didn't want to come off, but a uh, small bit of penetration oil and a uh, wire brush done the trick and um, I took them off no problem. And uh, here you can see me removing a middle strap, a middle bumper strap, which you can leave alone and just don't worry about it. All you have to do is just uh, remove a strap in a corner. And we need to remove a very last bolt, which was a 10 millimeter bolt, and the hole on the tray can um, come off now. And uh, this gives us a good access to the underbody, which we're gonna be drilling the holes through and uh, placing our spreader plates. And now it's a great opportunity to inspect your underbody for corrosion. Well, my underbody wasn't uh, in that bad of a shape, but still some surface rust here and there, so I will be addressing it. Uh, at the later stage but it will be completely different story and uh, this is roughly where our first boat's gonna go so. 
before drilling a massive 12 millimeter holes into your floor I've decided to put a 5 mil pilot holes first and then see where the holes gonna come out where a drill bit's gonna come out from underneath it's handy if you have uh, this 90 degree attachment to your drill just uh, makes your life a little bit easier and uh, I simply just went around and uh, drilled the uh, 8 5 millimeter pilot holes And uh, once we drilled our 8 5 mm holes, it's uh, time for a real tank for the 12 mm drill bit. I didn't have it, so I had to go and specially buy it from my local hardware store. I think all the kits, like mainly, we go up until 10 mm drill bits. And uh, it just wouldn't fit into my uh, 90 degree at attachment, so I had to. Uh, feed it uh, directly into my drill here I think it's a good idea to go on the low uh, speed setting on your drill so your drill bit has less chance of uh, jamming and uh, overheating. Now here because I didn't have an option to use my 90 degree um, drill attachment anymore I had to move a bit but because we pre-drilled and marked all the holes it was no problem at all so all holes were aligned perfectly later.
And then now it's a good time to give everything a very good clean before you put your bed back. Now we drilled our holes, we put our bed back, now it's a time to give that holes a treatment. You just can't leave them like that because it's gonna rust, we have to be treated and uh, protected. Okay, so I'm just using a bit of a brake cleaner to clean everything first and then I gave them a couple of coats of paint as well.
when I bought the bed it came with uh, bolts and uh, lock nuts and this uh, 75 by 75 mil 3 millimeter thick uh, spreader plates as well now when you build a new one uh, at the end uh, so called SQI uh, has to sign you off uh, just uh, basically to make sure it's uh, safe okay SQI it's uh, somebody who has a uh, an engineering or technical qualification so what he was looking for he was looking for 100 by 100 mil and the uh, four millimeter thick spreader plates so you may want to find out with him first before you uh, put your spreader plates uh, like that in all it takes just one phone call or even a text and it just saves you doing the same job twice at the later stage you can see my spreader plates are white I gave them two coats of uh, hammerite paint just to protect them from rust in here you can see nuts for anchoring points in your van uh, on my way so we were just getting on the way of spreader plate but uh, these nuts are welded so I didn't want to take them out I've decided just to trim my spreader plates a little bit and uh, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do or something you should do you should always uh, do your own research first and don't be just uh, blindly trust people random people from the internet but uh, meanwhile I'm just putting a uh, rest of the spreader plates in which uh, went in no problem at all And uh, at this stage it's a great opportunity to get your kids involved because you will need uh, a bit of uh, help when you tighten your bolts and nuts because you will need somebody to hold that nut when you will be tightening your bolt from uh, underneath Wait one sec. And uh, as I said before, this is where I got a little bit stuck because of those um, nuts for the anchoring points. But I've used the permanent marker just to mark where I wanted to trim my spreader plate. And uh, here I've just used uh, an angle grinder with a flap disc. I think it was a 120 grit flap disc. And uh, here you can see it's uh, already a little bit better, but it uh, just uh, needed a little bit more trimming. And uh, as ever, all the bare metal uh, should be treated. Okay. 
and the battery of my light died in here but you can still see it it just uh, fits quite nicely now And uh, it was the same procedure from Viva side too, just um, a little bit different shape of the spreader plate in here. And uh, in here I just gave uh, all the spreader plates and bolts just uh, an extra coat of uh, paint. Again, just uh, trying to protect it from rust and uh, prolong the vehicle's life. And the very last thing left to do is just to put our under tray back in. I gave it a good wash and I uh, use a bit of a dressing for plastic as well so it uh, looks a little bit better now. And uh, then just put your spare wheel back on and uh, this is it. This is our installation of our Captain Seat Rock and Roll bed is complete. Now guys, thank you ever so much for watching my videos, if you found it helpful, please give us a like, share and uh, drop us a comment. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, loads of more videos coming out as well. And uh, for now, take care and I'll catch you at the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.